everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel, Kathy's Random Acts of Stampin'. So glad you joined me today. We're going to have a, a little bit of an unusual uh, project today, but it's something that's very easy. Anybody can do this. The only special equipment you will need is a die cut machine, as in a lot of the uh, items that I make, uh, I do love using die cuts. But I am going to let this DSP, Thoughtful Journey, be the star of the show and this is such a beautiful pack of paper and you have seen me use this quite a bit i've got a lot of cut up pieces in the back of my uh, sleeve and this is just a gorgeous gorgeous pack of paper with all kinds of designs and these beautiful soft um watercolor designs um pictures it's beautiful. And Stampin' Up's come out with a couple of um, packs of this. In fact, we have a brand new pack that is called, let's see if I can find it. This will be coming out in the mini catalog that will debut on September the 3rd. And this one is called Splendid Autumn. And look, it's another pack like that with the beautiful designs. And you get four, six sheets of each design. They're front and back. And again, this is going to be absolutely spectacular pack of paper. Look at those bright, beautiful gold colors. So I can't wait to, to work with this. But today, we are going to be working with the Thoughtful Journey. So let me show you what I have done and what we're planning on doing. I took a sheet out of this pack, this particular sheet right here, and I cut a square, a three and a quarter by three and a quarter square, and I believe I cut this one here. I cut it from this side, and this is what I got from it. Is that not beautiful. I thought it turned out beautiful. And what I did for my colors, I saw that there was some misty moonlight. So I have a misty moonlight card base. And of course, there's white, the little splatter of white in there. So I used the white mat. I see some boho blue. So I made a mat from boho blue and I ran it through a brand new embossing folder that I'm going to show you. And I took my three and a quarter by three and a quarter piece of designer series paper. Then I cut it into strips and then I glued it onto a piece of acetate, the same size, but I put a little bit of spacing between them. And then I used the, oh, what was the name of those dies? The Fancy Forest. Frosted Forest. I used these dies and this little grouping of trees. And I brought in the Knight of Navy and cut those out. Before I embossed this, I stamped Happy Birthday and then ran it through the embossing machine. Because anytime you want to stamp, always stamp first, emboss second. And this was a very simple but very elegant looking card. And what's so great about a card like this? It can be masculine or feminine. It's it's either or. So that was a lot of fun to make. And we're going to do this again. I'm going to show you the process, but I'm going to show you how I pick colors and how you can decide on your colors according to your piece of designer series paper. So let's move this out of the way. And let me show you what I decided. But I would use this piece. I like this. We've got some of the wild wheat some pretty peacock, there's some mossy meadow, um, there's little specks of white, there's also some blues. Um, but what popped out to me the most was the pretty peacock and the wild wheat, and of course the white. So I grabbed a sheet of wild wheat and pretty peacock. And I think I'm gonna do my card base out of this. I'm going to mat with this, and I also have a piece of white, because I think if you put that small border of white around your piece, it really does add a lot to it. 
So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to grab my trimmer and I want to decide where I want to cut out of here. I know that I want some of that um, pretty peacock to show. So I'm going to come over to three and a quarter. I already got there and slice it. And I think I'm going to come say three and a quarter. I'm going to go three and a half. I'll, I'll tell you why when I get this cut. Three and a half, and then I'm going to cut a quarter inch off of the top. So line it up at three and a quarter, and just take that quarter inch off the top. I didn't really need that much sky. I want some of the sky up there, but I wanted to get in my other colors. Now, before we go anywhere with this, this is we want it to land on the card like this. I want to cut this in half. I need four pieces of this. I'm not measuring it. I'm going to eyeball it. So I'm going to do right about there. And then I'm going to cut this one in half. And again, I'm just going to eyeball it. I'm just going to sit it up in there and whack it. See, it's not exactly half, but it doesn't matter for the technique that we're going to use. Just keep them in the right order. Then I'm going to do the same thing with this one. I'm just going to put it in and give it a slice. Now, these, are, these pieces are what we're going to glue to our piece of acetate. So let me grab the acetate. I'm going to get a piece. I have a feet already cut quite a bit. It's hard to see that when you lay it. Uh, down one. Hopefully, we will be able to see what we're doing. And I'm going to cut this at three and three and a quarter. About three and a quarter. Just like that. I'm going to stick this acetate back into my sleeve because it's so easy to lose this stuff. It's clear and it just kind of gets lost in the shuffle. So I'm going to take the time to that together before I go any further. All right, so now I have my acetate. I am going to bring my silicone craft sheet out for a couple of reasons. That will allow you to be able to see my piece of acetate. And here are my, my pieces of designer series paper. So all I want to do is lay this on to my acetate. And you're going to come up just a little bit. So when you put this down, your acetate's actually going to be maybe about an eighth of an inch or so above it. So we're just going to use some liquid glue for this. And normally I would not use liquid glue with acetate, but this is not going to be seen. So I'm just going to swig a little glue on there and lay that down. I'm going to pick it up because I want to make sure that I've got it fairly even. That looks really good. Then I'm going to come in for, with my next piece, and this is going to go, and you want to make about an eighth of an inch gap between them. That's what gives us that beautiful effect of looking like there's glass in between. And you could do this with uh, silver or gold or uh, any type of um, metallic paper would be pretty as well. What's nice about this is whatever paper you put behind it, is going to pick up that color and the light's going to hit it and make it look transparent. So there's that one. Then we're going to do this one. And it's really good to have a um, silicone craft sheet or something under it so it doesn't stick to it. Um, that's why I pull this out. These little craft sheets are not that expensive and they are so handy to have. 
And they are on my Stamping Up website. If you're interested in one, I'll make sure I have the number linked on the PDF tutorial. And that, there we have that. Doesn't look like much yet. I'm going to let that sit over there and dry for a minute. And while it's drying, we're going to cut our cardstock. Now, I made this um, a landscape opening or portrait opening. We're going to do the other, we're going to do this card a little bit different. We're going to have a top open card. And I want to use my uh, wild wheat. So I'm going to bring my trimmer in. And I'm going to put this, let's zoom y'all out just a little bit. So I'm going to bring this, my eight and a half inch side to the top of my trimmer and I'm going to cut it in half at four and one fourth. Right up the middle. And this will give us two card bases. So now we're going to turn this and we're going to score it at five and a half. But I'm going to bring up my simply scored scoring tool for that. And what we're going to do is we're going to lay it in on the 11 inch side and half of 11 is five and a half. So I'm going to come right here on my five and a half mark and give that a good score. Now we're going to need to cut a white mat. Let's go ahead and get grab a thing folder and this burnished really well. Okay, now we need a white mat. And for the white one, I want it to be four and a quarter by five and three eighths. So four, yeah, four and, I'm sorry, not four and a quarter, four and one eighth. Four and one eighth. I think that's what I said. <laughs> anyway, four and one eighth. Uh, five and one, two, three eighths. This is going to give us a, a very slim border around our our wall wheat. So when you put this down, we're just going to get a tiny little bit of that all the way around. So just a tiny bit of that white's going to show. And then we're going to take our piece of pretty peacock and we're going to cut this at three and three fourths uh, let's go yeah let's do three and three fourths three and three fourths by five just like that and now this is the piece that we are going to um, emboss. See how I emboss this? Now, because this was a light colored paper, I was able to stamp my sentiment on here. But this being darker, I'm not going to be able to, unless I wanted to do Versafine, I mean Versamark uh, ink and heat emboss it. And I don't want to do that. So I'm going to actually use a, ta a label to put my sentiment on. But this is a brand new folder. This one's not, you can't purchase it yet. This will go on sale on September the 3rd. It will be in the mini catalog. And it's called Birchwood. And it's it's another one of those huge folders that are so nice if you are a scrapbooker, um, if you make a lot of um, albums and things like that, uh, folios, this is perfect for that. So I'm going to lay this in here and close it down. And then I'm going to grab my Stampin' Cotton Emboss Machine. Bring the big boy up on my desk. And he takes up a good portion of my desk. But I love this machine because it is so, it's just really a good machine. One of the best uh, hand crank machines I've ever used. I'm going to put my folder in on top of my number one plate. And then there's a... This comes with your stamp and cut machine. Number four is your specialty plate. So if you are embossing 3D embossing folders, this is always the sandwich you will use. And we're just going to crank this through. 
doing some jaw cutting in a few minutes, but for right now, we need to just get that out of our way. And here is our piece. Is that not gorgeous? I love it. It is so nice and embossed. I don't know what that is right there on my paper, but whatever it is, it doesn't matter because we're going to be covering that up. This is actually going to be going on top of it, but in a circle. Now you could leave it as a uh, as a rectangle, and that would that would work too. But I think it's so pretty with that stitching around it. So that's what we plan on doing. All right, so this is going to all layer up on the front of our card. And what I like to do is I like to center my mat on first. So I am going to put glue on the back of this. And I, I don't skimp when I, I'm gluing down an, an embossed piece of um, cardstock because I want that glue to get into those little nooks and crannies. And I'm going to turn that around. And I'm going to put this down. And this is going to give us a little larger border because I cut this at three and three quarters. So I'm going to turn it over and give it a little press from the back side. And then let's put glue on the white piece. Make sure my card's opening in the right direction. Now this mat is going to be just barely showing the log wheat. I'm going to open this card and I'm going to rub it from the inside. So let's to make sure I get everything adhered. So now we have the basis of our card ready to go. So let's bring our piece back over that we have our acetate on. And I'm going to grab my stylus shaped dies. And I'm going to grab the largest circle. And we're going to put this on here. Like so. Decide where you want it to be. If you want more over this way, more down here, but just make sure that the edge of your die is on the paper. I'm going to use my post-it flags just to hold this in place for me so it doesn't slip. Well, let's pull up our, we need one other thing to, um, my dies. Let's go ahead and cut this while we have our machine up. And that's our trees. And I think for my trees, I'm going to cut them out of mossy meadow. Let's see if I can get them on this square. Yeah, I think that scrap's going to work perfect for that. So let's open up our machine. And grab our plates. We need our number one plate. We need our die adapter, which is our number two. We need a well loved but not warped cut plate. I am going to take these down just so they don't move on me. And that's these right here. You know what? I'm going to cut them separate after all. I'll tell you why. This one, we're probably going to have to run it through several times. We can, we can probably go ahead and cut it on the first pass. The acetate is hard to cut. And I'll show you what we're going to do. We are going to run it through once. I'm going to take the trees off because I'm pretty sure they're cut. And then we're going to turn our plate over and run it back through. Then I'm going to do a switcheroo. I'm going to take, I'm going to take this completely out and I'm going to flip it. And I'm going to run it through like that. Just flip your cut plates, the cut plate and your cover plate. And then run it through one more time. 
and bring it back through. Anytime you're cutting through uh, paper and acetate, it's going to be a little hard to cut, but if you run it through like I just did, you're probably going to get a really nice cut, which we did. That cut out perfectly. So let's get all of this out of our way. We will need to do my sentiment. We'll pull it back up to that in a minute. All right, so now we have this to put right here. And let's pull our trees out. Now your trees are going to catch on one end right there. But just grab your paper snips and snip this off even. And if you come in from this side, you can just do that and it comes right loose. And wiggle your trees a little bit. You don't want to tear them. Once you get them out like that, then you can work all these little pieces out. And now these are ready to put down. And you can decide if you want them over this way or if you want them down lower or up higher. It's totally up to you where you want to put your trees. I think we could bring this up a little bit higher and run these trees right here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to mark right there with my pencil so I can see how where I need to trim that. And then I'm going to take my paper snips and just snip that off like that. This way I know that my piece is going to fit on that mat. And I really think what I want to do is bring the trees. I'm going to bring this up more to the top. And I'm going to bring the trees right here. Just like that. Isn't that pretty? And you can do this with any color. If you wanted to try your trees in a lighter color, um, you know, you could do your trees white if you wanted to. I think I like the uh, Mossy Meadow. I think it brings out the green in there really well. So I'm such a paper miser. I always cut these little pieces off. Because pieces like this are great for um, die cutting leaves and things like that. So I keep those. And I have a strap bin that I keep all of my pieces in. All right, so now we need to decide what we're going to put our sentiment on. And I'm thinking I want to go with the, um, the harvest, not the harvest. I always want to call it harvest skull. That goes back to the 70s when we used to have harvest skull appliances. The avocado green and the harvest skull. I'm telling my age now. But um, I think I want to go with that color for my, for my tag, for my sentiment. We could use our double oval. I think that would, that would work really well. I'm so glad that this punch is, has hung around as long as it has. Here's that the piece of white that will be perfect for the little piece. So I'm going to put that in and get my small piece out. And then I need a piece of the gold. Let's see if I have a small scrap. I do. And I'm going to take this piece and get the little scallop. And we can layer these. There. And stamp our sentiment. I think that would be beautiful like that. So let's go ahead and put this together. The first thing I want to do is I want to pop this up. 
Um, and to do that, I'm going to use some of my foam strips. And I only want my adhesive to go over where the paper is because you don't want it to be seen. So I'm going to wax that right there. And I'm going to put a couple of pieces here at the top. Just have to be patient and trim these little pieces off like that. And then for the other ones, you can use your little bits and pieces from your uh, leftover Stampin' Dimensionals for these. And I believe that this one will fit right there. And y'all know I keep all my bits and pieces, so I have a whole bag of little bits and pieces. So I'm going to grab some of these out. Waste not, want not. My grandmother used to say that. <laughs> it's funny how we end up saying things that we heard our parents um, say to us when we were growing up. Like, I sound like my grandmother. I always refer to her. She was mama to me because she raised me. But um, she was my grandmother. And I say thank God for grandmothers that are willing to step up and raise their grandchildren. And I'm not skimping on my pieces of uh, foam because I really want to make sure that it adheres well. So I'm going to go ahead and take off my adhesives. those adhesive strips. And now we are ready to put this down on here. Like that. And now for our trees, we're going to need some foam for those as well because they need to sit up. So we're going to actually need two strips to go across this. So I'm going to use one of these. And pull that backer strip off. And that's still wanting to show right there. We're going to get that little piece down. And we're going to set this right along here. And then to adhere these trees down just a tiny bit, I'm going to take a little bit of glue. And I'm just going to go on the back side of the stems and then just hold them down. So pretty. Now we need to find a little sentiment that will fit on there. This one's cute. This is our citrus bloom. It has a hello, all the love, and just checking in. I think the hello will work on here. Sometimes we just need a little small sentiment. And I think I'm going to stamp this using the wild wheat. Or do I want the... Maybe I'll do the pretty peacock. I think the pretty peacock will show up better. So I'm going to grab a stamp block and we're going to dab. And then this piece can go 
And we can decide if we want it to one side or the other. I think I like it to the right because it kind of balances the trees. Um, we have one centered, one to the left, and this one to the right. To me, it just makes my eyes more focused and balanced when it's like that. So I'm going to use liquid glue and glue that directly down. Now that we've done the outside of our card, if you wanted to put in uh, some gems or something like that, this would be the perfect time to do that. And these are brand new. These are in the, the online exclusives. I always color code my items so that if you see a red dot, they're online. If you see a um, a blue dot, their annual catalog, and if you see a yellow dot, they are um, a mini catalog. So I, that's just the way that I code it. It helps me to know which catalog something came from, and it also helps you to see that in case I don't mention which catalog. So just kind of take note of that whenever you're seeing me use products. Uh, it is a color code. So I think I'm going to put one here. And maybe one. Maybe I'll put two here. And one. I'm just going to put them just like that, that little triangle. Um, these are the pecan pie and clear ribbon, ribboned adhesive back dots. They are gorgeous. Look at the sparkle. Isn't that a beautiful card? So now the only thing we've got left to do is to do our mat on the inside. I think I'm going to do a pretty peacock and a white. So let's grab our trimmer. And this just needs to be four by five and a quarter. And then my white piece needs to be three and three fourths by five. And then this piece, we are going to actually do our stamping on. And I think I'm going to stick with the Pretty Peacock ink. And that's going to go on there just like this. This is a new stamp set called Autumn Expressions. Look at this font. I think I'm going to do the grateful for you or have a perfectly lovely day. That is pretty too. Yeah, let's let's do that. I didn't realize I was going to pull out some of my new stuff, but this set is gorgeous. Have a perfectly lovely day. And I'm also going to use this little wheat. Sprigs, and I think I'm going to do those in the wild wheat. So let me grab my wild wheat. Like that, isn't that gorgeous? I love the wild wheat. It took me a, a minute to really um, embrace the wild wheat. But it's just a beautiful golden color that is so nice. All right, now have a perfectly lovely day. We're gonna do that in pretty peacock. So beautiful. I'm a sucker for a pretty font and that stamp set has some of the prettiest ones that I have seen in a long time. So now all we have to do is put this on here and look at those colors. 
Beautiful. And then we can open our cord and put this in like so. We just finished up yesterday with um, her, the Tropical Storm Debbie. Uh, we did not experience any damage here. We were very fortunate because there was places in North Carolina that got hit really hard in South Carolina um, as well. And there's still places that are underwater. But um, the storm really dumped a huge amount of rain. I think we got like seven inches. It's a lot of rain. I just happened to live in a high, higher area of ground. And, uh, you know, anytime there's flash flooding, it's always the low lying areas. So now we can lay this in. Like so. Give it a press, get a press, and there we go. So whether you did it in blue or green, regardless of which colors you use, you can see it is a beautiful, and I didn't put any gems on this one. Let's, let's see what we got, but we can throw something pretty that way. These basic gray and smoky slate curls would be pretty on this. I'm going to put those on there. I think those would look really nice. And I'm going to go with these ones right here. And for this one, I'm going to put one here. And one here. And one. I always hate it when they come off on my finger. Then I have trouble getting them off. <laughs> but there's a will, there's a way. There we go. So we've trimmed that one up too. And I will have the supplies for both of these cards listed in the PDF tutorial, along with all the measurements and everything that you will need if you decide you want to replicate um, this beautiful card. Um, we do have the uh, the acetate, uh, we call them window sheets at Stampin' Up, and they work beautifully for this. And if you want to make a shaker card, you need them for that as well. But these are our two cards. This one opens this way, and I haven't done the inside of this one yet. And then this one opens this way. I think they turned out really pretty. I hope you enjoyed this. And if you did, give me a thumbs up. Share this video, and if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please think about doing so. It doesn't cost anything to subscribe, and all it does, it allows you to get notified whenever I put up a new video. God bless and keep you, and as I always say in closing, let everything that you do and say bring honor to our Lord Jesus. He is worthy. Until we craft again, God bless and keep you. Bye-bye.